Easter Monday, perhaps a bit of an anticlimax after Easter Sunday, with no special bank holiday events this year to mark this day out from any other. So what are you going to do with the gift of today? Looking at the news, I guess we all have a much deeper appreciation now of the gift of today. I'd like to read you a few verses from the end of Matthew's Gospel, which describes what three groups of people did with their day, three days after Jesus had been crucified. Now, as I'm reading this, you may like to try and pick out the three groups. Just need to say that the, the two women referred to in the reading are um, Mary Magdalene and the lady who's called the other Mary. So Matthew 28 verses 8 to 15. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers. Go to Galilee. There you will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. OK, so did you get those three groups? Well, let's leave the two women, two Marys, till the end. The first group is the guards. They went to report the empty tomb to the religious leaders. They had had exactly the same experience of seeing the angel and of seeing the empty tomb as the two Marys. And they'd also had the same experience of feeling afraid. So they go off and they tell the second group, you've got that, the religious leaders. These men must have been really very fearful. Fearful that Jesus was who he claimed to be, the Son of God. And that that claim had been shown to be true by God raising him from death to life. So they've got two options. They can either accept what's happened or they can try and cover it up. They decide to, to bribe the guards to say that the disciples took the body away while they, the guards, were asleep. Pretty silly thing of the guards to do, admit to being asleep on duty. So no wonder that the guards needed, as the reading told us, a large sum of money to tell such a whopping lie. And a lie which was soon to be disproved in a, in a very big way anyway. So now we come to the third group, the women. Isn't it really significant that at every significant moment in Jesus' life is witnessed by some women? So they simply do as the angel tells them. He's not here, he is risen, says the angel. He's going ahead into Galilee and there you will see him. So the angel says, go and tell the disciples and then you set off to Galilee where you'll see him as well. Now, it was miles to walk to the Galilee region. It's, it's roughly as far as from going from Scholes to Durham. So depending on how good a walker you are, that could be a three or a four day walk, couldn't it? But hang on just a minute. Even before the two Marys could get to the disciples, who were still in Jerusalem, I mean, probably no more than an hour's walk away, even before they could get to them, Jesus met them. Had they got, had the angel rather, got the message wrong? No, clearly not. But we do need a little bit of help to understand what was going on then and how it's going to really help us now. And that help is going to come from Jesus' brother, James. Now, 
James wasn't a follower of Jesus before his resurrection. And St Paul tells us how James, like Paul himself, became a follower of Jesus. Listen to this from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, just verses 6 and 7. After his resurrection, Jesus appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living. Then he appeared to James, then all of the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me. So James met Jesus both before and after his resurrection, and the after meeting changed his total understanding of Jesus. It actually changed his total life, really. So when James writes in his epistle, draw close to God and he will draw close to you, we know, we know that we're listening to someone who really knows what he's on about. OK, right, where's this taken us to now? It's taken us to the simple truth that meeting the risen Jesus is not that difficult. He's not a three day walk away. He's not up in Durham or somewhere remote. Just by following the example of these two Marys and by taking, well, not maybe that sort of first rather tentative, fearful step, you will be surprised at what happens. The two women were moving with some trepidation in the direction that they'd been told to go when Matthew tells us, suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said, do not be afraid. To you and to me, Jesus still says, greetings, do not be afraid. Let's finish with the prayer Bishop Paul sent to St Philip for last Sunday, for Palm Sunday, when he was due to be with us. This is the prayer. God of power, you are strong to save and never fail those who trust in you. Keep us under your protection and spread abroad your reign of peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>